Now, the UN's humanitarian chief has warned that hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the fighting in northwest Syria are at great risk from an imminent escalation in the conflict. Almost a million people have fled a government offensive against rebels in Idlib, and the conflict which has drawn in Turkey is approaching heavily populated areas where many have sought shelter. Mark Lokok said if hostilities reached these places, the human cost would be instant and huge. The Syrian regime argues that the offensive is needed to combat tens of thousands of Islamist militants there. Well, I'm joined now in the studio by the main spokesperson for the US-led mission uh, to defeat the group calling itself Islamic State uh, here in London for talks with other officials about the future of Operation Inherent Resolve. That's Colonel Miles B. Kagans III. Thank you very much for coming along to talk to us, uh, your spokesperson, uh, not just for the US, but for the other 82 members of this coalition in Iraq and Syria fighting against IS. But let me begin by asking you, what is the status of the US in this coalition at the moment? Because we know that President, Tr uh, President Trump wants to reduce US uh, troop numbers in the region and see NATO taking a much bigger role. Uh, well, Anita, it's good to be here to talk to you about the coalition. The coalition continues to be committed to backing our Iraqi security force partners and Syrian Democratic Force uh, partners in their fight to defeat ISIS remnants. In uh, recent days, there have been high-level discussions between NATO and the government of Iraq, and it looks like uh, NATO will expand its training role inside Iraq. As a result, the coalition is likely to off-ramp some of its training mission to NATO. This is really a natural evolution and something that is capable because of the great success that the Iraqi security forces have had since 2014 in defeating ISIS. You're talking there about training responsibilities, but what about frontline missions? Are we seeing a reduction in U.S. troop numbers there as well? Because, you know, many people think it was a, strate a strategic mistake for President Trump uh, to begin this drawdown of U.S. forces in terms of degrading IS's long-term ability to fight in the region? Well, the coalition has more than 30 nations who contribute troops to the mission to defeat uh, ISIS in Iraq and Syria. And the, the strength of our coalition and the partnership is what makes us both credible and capable. The second prong of our mission is to help the Iraqis outside the barbed wire to uh, defeat ISIS remnants to catch sleeper cells and stop ISIS from the crimes that they have been committing of uh, harassing and conducting terror. But, but the United Nations humanitarian chief, as we mentioned in the introduction, is talking about an imminent escalation in the conflict. There are grave concerns for civilians, for refugees, many of them, many of them children. So is this a time when the U.S. should be stepping back in whatever form from its role in this coalition? Well, the, the coalition against ISIS operates in the eastern part of Syria, in the Hasaka and Deir Ezzor provinces. But we're keeping a watchful eye on what's happening in northwest Syria, and we call on the regime, backed by the Russians, to stop their indiscriminate killing of civilians. This is a, a humanitarian crisis already, and it will only get worse by the regime and regime-backed militias and terrorist groups continuing to to destroy people in northwest Syria. Our focus, though, is on partnering with the Iraqis and SDF to defeat ISIS remnants, and we are committed to that mission. And, and over time, we are always relooking the amount of troops that we have in the region. Uh, and so you're saying those numbers could go back up again? Oh, we have no plans to increase the amount of troops, but it's important that you all know that all of our movements inside of Iraq are coordinated with the government of Iraq. We have coalition troops who are in operation sitters sitting side by side with Iraqi officers and sharing our movements and working within the laws of Iraq. Obviously, in the military, you obey the orders. Those orders come from the commander in chief, President Trump. But, you know, to go back to that point that many people think the, the, the drawdown of U.S. troops at this junction is a, a strategic mistake. Uh, you, you must see that point of view. We've had great success with our Iraqi partners, and there, I don't have any announcements to make about the reduction of any troops, but we are always looking at ways to maintain efficiencies, but also help the Iraqis achieve you, tactical you think overmatch those against you, ISIS. You think those partners can uh, fill in for any 
reduction in numbers on the U.S. side. You don't think that the military effort of the coalition will be damaged by the withdrawal of those U.S. forces? The United States leads the coalition in Iraq and Syria, but no doubt it's we're just one nation out of many that are committed to helping the Iraqis, and the Iraqis are taking the fight to ISIS themselves. They just conducted an operation in the Anbar province called Iraqi Heroes, where they captured dozens of ISIS outlaws and destroyed many of their weapons caches. I just also want to ask you about your thoughts on what impact the killing of the Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani at the beginning of this year, what impact is that having in the region? Well, we had a time of uh, heightened tensions, but in recent weeks, uh, things have settled a bit and we paused our operations and have been closely coordinating with the government of Iraq. There have been nearly 20 uh, rocket attacks on Iraqi bases hosting coalition troops in the past three months. And uh, we will always do what we have to do to defend ourselves, but we want to get right back on our mission of training and advising the Iraqi security forces, helping them outside the wire to catch ISIS remnants. And we're glad that NATO and NATO Mission Iraq is a strong partner in this goal. Uh, coming back to uh, the humanitarian concerns, and we've been hearing, we've all been hearing about the, the killings, massacres in Idlib province. Um, shouldn't the West and the U.S. as part of that group uh, be doing more to stop these? Well, everybody should uh, follow the UN Security Council resolutions and come to a settlement in Syria as soon as possible. And all military sides should not want to have any, uh, should not target civilians ever. And, well, you know, that, that's the diplomacy and, and, and that's what, you know, most people would like to see happen, but there is the reality on the ground. So is there a need for a more immediate Western response, which includes very firmly front and center of that, the U.S. Well, the, the military coalition's charter is to defeat ISIS remnants, but we have colleagues uh, in Tampa and other places who are watching the situation closely in northwest Syria, and the world has expressed a concern through the United Nations, through NATO, about the situation on the ground there in northwest Syria. And our partners on the ground, the Syrian Democratic Forces, who still maintain security in western towns like Manbij, Tabqa, Raqqa, they're concerned about the humanitarian flow into those regions and there's always the threat that some of the terrorist groups might split out and affect the people in eastern Syria. Okay, Colonel uh, Miles B. Kagans III, official spokesperson for Operation Inherent Resolve, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, good to see you Anita.